to another level when they got to Samaria Samaria was a brand new thought process for them for them to reach Samaria was was something that they would have never thought of had not the Spirit led them there matter of fact Jesus had to send them to the marketplace because he knew the evangelism that he wanted to do in Samaria was not something that they would accept and so when they came to Samaria it was different it was casting out devils it was healing the paralytics it was repentance it was a city filled with joy because they had their they had forgiveness of sins they had been washed in the waters of baptism in the wonderful name of Jesus but the Holy Ghost had not poured out upon them yet and the Bible says Peter and John went down there Peter used the keys of the kingdom and guess what they didn't have to tarry for it when they accepted a larger perimeter of vision they got a greater degree of ministry the greater your vision the larger your authority the greater your vision the more capacity you have to minister to people the larger that your vision is the better equipped that you become to minister to more people if you're just in a Pentecost mentality then you're waiting for everybody to do it the same way that you did it and so you're making them pray for an hour or two hours or three hours down at the altar and wait for them to finally sweat enough that they get the Holy Ghost but I believe that the larger our vision is the more authority we ought to get and we don't have to wait we can lay our hands on you and in the name of Jesus you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost we never find another place in scripture where they ever tarried for the Holy Ghost ever again. Even in Acts 19, it was where Paul went to Ephesus and he just laid his hands on them and they immediately got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody say, I believe that. I believe say, I can have that. Can. Say, we've got that. that. Look at your neighbor and say, watch out. Watch out. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on and clap your hands to the Lord. They shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Something is going to click, Jesus said. You're going to get to a place where you're going to realize you don't have to wait on it. It's already in you. You've already got it. It's already in your hands. And all you've got to do is reach out with your faith and use it. So when you get to Samaria, this is, this is waist deep for Ezekiel. We've had the ankle deep in Jerusalem. We've had knee deep in Judea. Now we're up to our waist. And this is about as far as we can walk. This is as far as we can stretch ourselves. Because Peter, when he was prophesying, even prophesied beyond his own bias. These signs shall follow them that believe, Jesus said. But they thought that that meant just Jewish believers. And so when they interpreted the scriptures, he shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh. They thought that meant Jewish flesh all around the world. And so that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost because there were believers from all around the world that heard them speak 17 different dialects. By the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But when God was saying all flesh, he wasn't just saying all Jewish flesh. He was really saying all flesh. And you see, sometimes we can speak things that are even beyond our own bias and even beyond our own mindset. But God, by the Spirit, is catapulting us into things that we don't even know if we're ready for yet. And we're feeling a surge of the Holy Ghost that's pulling us, that's drawing us. And we're still kind of figuring it all out. And God is carrying us into something that's even beyond what we've ever preached and what we've ever known and what we've ever experienced. And we have walked as far as we can walk by ourselves. But God is saying, I'm ready to take you to the next level. Are you ready to go? I'm about to bring you to waters to swim in. Oh, but God, that means I won't be able to feel the bottom anymore. He said, exactly. Launch out into the deep. And that's where the fish are. The fish are in the place when we're not in charge. The harvest is in the place when I can't control anything. The harvest is in the dimension when I say, you know what, God, this is just a sovereign move of your spirit. This is just you in charge of everything. Just take over. We're not going to have another choir. It's time to go now. It's time to move now. It's time to move in the Holy Ghost now. So watch it. 
Watch it, let me walk through it quickly. When you get to Acts 10, it's very elaborate and detailed. Because when God takes you into this dimension of the Spirit, He has to lay very good signposts and roadmaps for you to be able to navigate it. And so He gives much more detail in Acts 10 than He gave to the Jews or the Samaritans. The Jews had 4,000 years of preparation. The Gentiles were coming out of paganism. They did not have mindsets that were, that were conducive for this kind of an experience. And so God had to take the church to another level of ministry in order to accommodate the largeness of the group that he was calling them to and the deficit of knowledge and faith experience, the ignorance that was in them. So let's watch how God does it in the 10th chapter. God starts off with just some honest-hearted people. Fear God, sincere, don't know much. And their interpretation of Jesus and his life was that it was a social gospel. It's about feeding the poor. It's about giving alms. It's about caring. It's about being sensitive to people's needs. It's about being compassionate. It's about feeding the homeless and it's about clothing the naked. It's about going to the places where the, where, the, where the people are in prison and visiting them. And that's pure religion and undefiled. Taking care of the widows. It starts with a social gospel. Very, very sincere. But after a while, Cornelius begins to realize that just being social does not meet the need that is inside of his spirit and so he begins to yearn and says God there's got to be something more than just it being a nice community of caring people that give of the substance that they have and we concern ourselves with poor people this is very important this is very good this is something that Jesus did but there was something else that was yearning inside of him and so the Bible says he started praying and he started fasting and when you start praying and fasting things start changing changing in your life and you're going to transition from just going to church to see the people that you like to see to going to church because you want to hear something from God and I believe there's a lot of denominational people that are going to church every single week and they're wondering where is God in this service I heard a statistic recently that said 52,000 people every single Sunday go to their denominational church and never come back because they have one complaint the complaint is not that the preacher was not articulate. It was not something wrong with the choir or the choir robes. It wasn't a beautiful facility. It wasn't even the programs or a lack of programs for their kids or the Sunday school class. The one thing that they said that was missing is we cannot feel anything. I believe that we are right on the precipice of the greatest revival that we have ever seen in the history of the world because people are hungry for the true moving of the Spirit of God. And if you ever get a taste of this, if you ever feel the rain, Pastor, if you ever feel the anointing of God, if you ever know what it's like to feel the revelation of Jesus Christ and what it does to transform your life, you can never be satisfied with anything else when we were in Beaumont we had this couple that was in a Methodist church they were there I think 30 years they gave who knows how many thousands of dollars they were they were a, a, a precious a wonderful couple